worship His name and to glorify His name. Shall we close our eyes for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before your presence. We humble ourselves before you, dear God. We need your presence. We need your guidance, oh God. We cannot do anything, Lord, apart from you. So we ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to be in our midst today. Open our minds. May we be imbued with your presence, with your power, with your might. Because we know, Lord, we are nothing apart from you. We ask, Lord, that thou will guide us and teach us. And may we be able, Lord, to learn new things from you today. And may it be a part of our experience every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, good morning. I have here with me on my left is uh, Brother Carlo Carino. And on my right is my wife, uh, Sister Kina De Castro. So we're going to uh, give you a very short, I'm sure a lot of you have studied your lesson, and we will just go over some very important points that we need to discuss today. So we are on the topic about Philip as a missionary. So I'm sure you have your Bibles with you. And uh, Philip as a missionary is different from the rest of the other Philips. You will notice that we have at least four Philips in the Bible, not, the, not including the Bible, of course. Okay. And uh, Philip Morris. <laughs> okay. So anyway, the first two Philips are considered to be uh, non-Christians. They are actually part of uh, the Roman uh, Empire. And of course, uh, they are called Philip Herod. And there are two other Philip. And the third Philip is the disciple of Jesus. And of course, the fourth Philip is this person that we're going to talk about this morning. He is a missionary. And in the beginning, he is a table waiter. Who among you here works in the restaurant? Nobody? Okay. Or probably in a, in a place where to sort of serve in the hotels. Anybody who is in the hotel working here? Nobody? Okay, if you are uh, very observant in a restaurant, the person you're talking with all the time are the waiters, right? They are just there waiting for orders, waiting for whatever you would like them to serve you, and getting your orders, and of course, uh, serving them as well. So these are very, very simple people. And Philip is just one of these people. He is a table waiter. He receives orders. He writes down whatever you order for him. And of course, gives back your order after you have ordered them. But eventually, Peter became one of Jesus' disciples or one of Jesus' followers because the other Philip is really a disciple. And because of his experience, he goes from place to place telling a lot of people, what kind of person Jesus is. The first experience that he has is, uh, of course, in, in Samaria. You know, in those days, the, the disciple of Jesus was in the early days were in the kind of witness about Jesus, telling them about Jesus being resurrected. And the Jews doesn't like that. The Jews that would like to stop them from telling all these people that Jesus was alive, because after the resurrection of Jesus, there was this news that there was no resurrection of that person named Jesus. And so whenever somebody tells about the resurrection of Jesus, that Jesus really is around and Jesus is present, Jesus was resurrected, they wouldn't believe them. And so all efforts to persecute them, to stop them, was really uh, being done against those people who are preaching about Jesus. And so Philip was just one of them. He tells a lot of people that Jesus was alive and Jesus is in heaven and Jesus was the person whom you are persecuting and Jesus ascended up to heaven. And one day, he was one of these people who actually saw Stephen being stoned to death. Remember Stephen? Stephen was one of those uh, disciples that were chosen. Actually, Philip works with Stephen because there were seven disciples whom they choose early on among the Christian church Remember, they, they have some sort of a problem in church. They were distributing food, 
And there came a point when they, they sort of organized themselves and Philip was one of the seven disciples or seven deacons who, was, who were chosen to sort of witness for God in, in those places. And so he witnessed how Stephen was stoned to death. But do you believe St uh, Philip stopped there? Seeing Stephen stoned to death, would this actually sort of stop Philip from preaching God's word? It was a different story. Philip continued on and on and on and on to be a disciple of Jesus. So here, we are, we are seeing that simple as a waiter probably, or simple as we are, God can still use us. We might think of ourselves as nobody. We may think of ourselves that doesn't even know how to open our Bibles, how to share the truth to others. But our experience, our personal experience with God is itself a testimony about the goodness of the Lord, about the goodness of God. So Philip was just one person who does that kind of thing uh, in the early part of Christian uh, experience. And so there is a promise in our text today which I will read, which serves as our key text. It says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and in the ends of the earth. The key word here is actually the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is poured upon us, we cannot hold our peace. You cannot just sit down there waiting for somebody to talk. You will simply just talk about the goodness of God when you're given an opportunity to share them to others. You'll be a table waiter. You may be working in the hospital. You may be working in the hotel. Wherever you are, when Jesus transforms your life, you will just like a machine for the Lord. Amen? Amen. So today, I would like to talk about Philip as a family man. You see, Philip has four unmarried daughters. So how do we reach people having been involved in God's word as a family man, as an evangelist, and of course as a host, as a father to his daughter? What is the experience of Philip? Let me ask uh, Brother Carlo here. Um, um, according to the lesson, uh, Philip has four unmarried daughters who pro prophesied. In other words, um, it shows what kind of a parent Philip is. Her, uh, his, his daughters, even if they are under persecution for being missionaries, they followed the footsteps of their father in uh, being faithful to God. And that's the reason why the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were able to prophesy for God's work. So it shows that um, how good and how faithful, even in the parenting side, Philip is very good as a parent. Because if you're not good, your, your children will not follow you, will not follow in your footsteps. So it shows the kind of hard work, hard work Philip is in terms of being a parent. Not only hard working for, for God's work, but also in his household. Thank you, Brother Carlo. You, you will notice here that the first uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit happened where? During, in, in the upper room, right? When all the disciples were around and the Holy Spirit, after they prayed about it, was poured on all of them and they, they speak different languages. And if you recall last Sabbath, we talk about Cornelius, right? When Cornelius also was sent and they talked to Peter and when Peter went to the place of, uh, of Cornelius, there was also an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And this time around, it was with the Jews together with some Gentiles who were with them. And here you can see that there is another outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the family of Philip. His daughters, his four daughters who are unmarried, also received the power of the Holy Spirit. So you can see here that there is a consequential outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's not like one outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I perceive that this is the same thing that will happen to us right now. The outpouring 
will not happen all at the same time. As we accept the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will pour out His Spirit on all of us. If we remain faithful to God, if we ask for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will be poured upon us. And this is exactly why we are here today. We would like to be poured out with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God Himself. And when we actually allow the Holy Spirit to take control of our lives, that is when the Spirit will be poured upon each one of us. So it's a daily thing. It's an experience that we have to experience. We would not wait till the time that the church would experience the Holy Spirit as a corporate body. I don't think it would happen. It will happen on an individual basis. Remember, the Holy Spirit was poured out not in the church, but in the upper room. It's away from the church. So it's possible that the Holy Spirit will be poured out not inside the church, but outside the church, somewhere, probably in the mountains, in the mountains of Antipolo, right? Do you agree? And probably in the mountains of Tagaytay, or in the other mountains. Because unless the people of the Lord will ask for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not come to us. Okay, the second point that I'm, go I'm going to raise is, uh, you see, God touches people from different levels. We may be, okay, Philip is a table waiter. He reached out to table waiters, but it doesn't stop there. He actually met several other people, not just table waiters, but these are prominent people. These are people that we even didn't hear about. And so here in our lesson, it says meeting people where they are. You are probably a lawyer. You prophesy to people who are lawyers. You're a doctor. You prophesy with people, with people who are doctors. You're a businessman. You prophesy with people who are businessmen. You don't need to prophesy to all levels of people. You reach different levels of people, but wherever you are, you are prophesying God's word. So let me ask my wife here, how do you prophesy or how do you meet people where they are? Well, um, based on my experience, with regards to the lesson, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit will impress you when is the right, the, when is the right time to tell. Because during the time when we have this uh, conversation with my non-Adventist friends, um, there will, there, you will be able to experience persecution or they will laugh at you. Because when I was um, um, sharing, when I was, uh, when I was sharing about the, the Bible, they began to say, what are you talking about? Because I, I, in during my college days, I don't study in an Adventist school. I studied a Catholic school. And it's my first time to see people, you know, para kong uh, bagong, what's that? Like that. Um, then when I saw these people, they always say, why do you have to, why, when you always, when you choose, choose food, why do you always, took, it took time for you to, what is that, what is that? You always keep on asking. Or let's say, you, why can you not attend on, church, uh, on school during classes on Sabbath days? And then I began to share. But you know, when sharing, it's not easy. They will laugh at you. And they will make uh, stories, let's say like uh, chewing gum, flavored pork, or no, let, let's uh, let don't uh, let's say Kina cannot go on Friday night or Saturday because he may be changed in something different, and people will laugh at you like that. But you know, when you remain faithful, you begin the Holy Spirit will impress these people. What God is he with that person serving? That's why when you meet people like Philip, do not hesitate to share. You share. Because maybe that time, even if they're laughing, they will praise God. Because the moment, uh, the moment when this uh, particular event in my life that you cannot graduate because they will have to have a particular activity on a Saturday, Definitely, I cried because I'm a person don't like to have a hassle with my studies. I go to, I always choose bathroom, sorry. I always choose to go to the bathroom and prayed. And I prayed and I prayed. And they, one of my friends say, you just go to your president and write a note. 
that you will be excused. Or maybe your God would understand you. God will understand that you will be excused from, from going to, to school. He will understand. God understands. You know that? Or you tell your elders, your pastors to do this and this. But you know, but that's my faith, I said to my friends. And they began to, uh, no, you know, persecute. You know, I may say persecution because they laughed at you. They, they bully you and all that stuff. But you know, Lord, you brought me to this place. You, uh, you allowed me to go to this place, and I know I have a purpose why I'm here. After a few days, things change. The dean changed the day instead of Saturday. They changed it the weekday. When we convene again, one of the friends that uh, said that you go to the pastor or to the president, say a note of that, that your God will understand you, he said, you're really, your God is really alive. Because he changed the date, you know, you're, you're, you know, from that day on, I didn't, I, from that day on, he said, he told, she told me, malakas ka naman sa Panginoon, ikaw na lang magdasal. You know, from that time, it's, uh, when, when, when meeting people, I do not hesitate, personally, to share what I've learned from the Bible. Because by doing so, maybe that person needs the truth. Or that person needs enlightenment. And, but, but for us, our family, we always give booklets to, to the guards, to the um, tall, tall people, tall people who are getting the money, tall people, and then to the, to the vendors, um, to my friends, for my, for, to all my friends. And they ask, what is this all about? It's not about converting them. I'm not the one converting them. It's the Holy Spirit's work. It's just that we are instrument telling them about God. Okay, thank you so much. So you can see here that uh, wherever we may be, whatever our level of uh, profession, wherever God puts us, there's really no limit. In Mrs. White says, there is no limit to the usefulness of one who by putting set aside makes way for the Holy Spirit. To really work in our lives if we allow the holy spirit to work in our lives wherever we may be god can use us powerfully so as we go through the other portion of the, the study we can see here also that philip as i've said met different uh, people and one day when he was riding when he was going home actually he was asked by the by the lord himself to meet somebody who happens to be a eunuch um, Ethiopian eunuch. This person uh, actually uh, belongs to s some kind of a higher echelon in the society. And uh, when he, they saw him riding on a chariot, the Holy Spirit of God speaks to Philip, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit said, Go near that eunuch. When, when actually Philip go near that eunuch, he saw that that eunuch was reading. Isaiah 53, which is actually talking about uh, somebody who will later on be crucified and be stripped of his authority and be persecuted. And he cannot understand what, what he's reading. I mean, even ourselves, if we, if we read it for the first time, we may not be able to understand it as well. But, but here, Philip was asked by the Holy Spirit to talk to this eunuch. And then he tried explaining what it is all about, what this, the text is all about. And to make the story short, the, the eunuch believed. And when they saw a river, the, the eunuch said, can I be baptized? And so that time, Philip baptized the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch. And eventually, Philip was gone. He was just, according to the, the Bible, he was taken by, by the Lord. And he actually found himself going north of Jerusalem. So you can see here that in some ways, in difficult ways probably, uh, you, you might wonder, how can I reach these people? How can I connect with these people? How, I wanted to share, but I cannot connect. But you see, God will make use of every opportunity. Probably God is talking to you. Probably God has been talking to you, and you are not yet listening to him. But you see, if we allow the Holy Spirit to talk to us, 
probably he will use that opportunity to talk to you and then you talk to the person and probably for the first time that person is listening to you and probably he will be able to learn about the truth and then he will decide for himself what really God has planned for him. Now, according to my wife, uh, we are trying to distribute some of these uh, books that we have. We have this book, Health and Wellness. I don't know if you have that. Do you have the Health and Wellness book? Have you seen that? Health and Wellness book? Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a very uh, small book. And every time I see my patients, I give one piece of that book. Of course, if you look at the title, it's, it's Health and Wellness. They will not create prejudice among the patients because it's about health. But if you read actually that book that talks a lot about the God, how you take care of your body, how you, how you can preserve your body. So it's all about witnessing again. And sometimes uh, there are people I met and I cannot have a chance to actually give it to them. So what I do, I just leave, in, leave it on their table. And they will just be surprised probably how come I have a book. <laughs> they have a book just in, on their table. But the point is that we can do a lot of other things, be creative in witnessing for God because you see, there are so many ways that we can witness. In the, in, the case of, in the case of Philip, he allowed himself to be used by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit simply used him. He was taken anywhere the Holy Spirit wants to bring him. So in our case, also at the present time, allowing the Holy Spirit to take full control of our lives will make a lot of difference. It will show us what God would like us to be, what God plans us to be like, and people will just be influenced by what our lives have been, how we live our lives, and whatever that life is, they also can be a witness to whatever transformation we see in our lives. So any last words from our panel? <clears throat> Padre Carlo? Um, when I was reading the lesson, I noticed that the disciples and the, the disciples, the 12 disciples were performing miracles and it helped them convert the believers at first. But later on, because of persecution, they were forced to uh, flee. And according to the lesson, that is the reason why um, persecution was necessary so that the word will spread. They went to so many places to preach about God because the place that they started from has already been a hot ground. And they were they, they, they're being killed like Stephen, stoned, stoned to death. And if you have the Holy Spirit with you, you will not be afraid to face anything. In fact, Paul said, let them kill me, I'm not afraid. But I will still deliver the word, the, the good message, no matter what happens. So, I guess that's that's my end. That's what's yeah. important for me. Yeah, I think that the point is very important. Persecution was necessary. Sometimes in our lives, we might be removed from where we are working at the present, only for God to bring us somewhere better than what we have experienced before to also share the message to others. I'm sure some of you here doesn't like to be removed, right? From where you're working. But sometimes God feels it's necessary because God would like you to be a missionary somewhere else. Um, I would like to quote Ellen G. White said in the, loud, um, the last day's events, God uses even illiterate, even children, even ordinary people to tell the good news. Because, you know, these the people, they will, not, they will withstand the doubts and questions that infidelity can produce. So these people, we are, I may say consider, we are ordinary people. We are not pastors. We are not, uh, we, we are not uh, studied a lot. I mean, go to scholars and do, we do pastoring. But in our own little way, God is using us to spread, to share the good news about the, the second coming about the Christ, uh, about the health and wellness as well. So thank you very much. Unless you have any question. 
Sir Fidersnan. Thank you so much for your time. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath.